if I read a script that I feel like, hold on, I gotta get this out of my face. Okay, if, if I read a, if I read a, when I read a script that I feel like is a story or a role that is something I have to do or I want to be a part of, it's a feeling of like claustrophobia or pressure at first, and like a feeling that I need to be a part of it, and then thinking the, what's the audition process going to be, and and how do I uh, get as close to this goal as possible? Because as we all know, the answer is more often no than it is a yes. But you know, I, I said this to a friend recently, like. Uh, Getting very close to a role or getting a lot of callbacks or being one of the last three but then not getting it, that is not a clear loss. There's a feeling of an overnight switch with some of these films, but what's been an even more gratifying feeling is w working with producers or directors that I've worked with before in the past. And more than anything, more than a one random successful audition, I think just as consistently putting out as much good work as possible in audition form and casting form is a step in the right direction. Uh, I think uh, honesty and being as open a book as possible, I think that was the biggest takeaway from uh, the drama high school I went to for me was uh, keep your heart on your sleeve as an actor. That's your instrument. Your ability to make yourself an open wound is what will communicate to the audience and hopefully serve as a therapeutic device for people experience something, experiencing something similar to the story. I think that's true of Call Me By Your Name and we just did the interview with Daniel Kaluuya and I think that's true of Get Out as well. Um, as it relates to working more professionally and outside of a, a academically dramatic environment, I think it's adaptability. That's like the strongest suit you can have as an actor. The experience working with Luca Guadagnino is different than the experience working with Greta Gerwig. It was different from the experience working with Christopher Nolan. And as an actor, particularly if you're not the lead of the project, you try to make yourself as uh, clay-like, as malleable as possible, a blip in the radar, uh, a wallflower. Uh, somebody who comes prepared and is ready to go and maybe you have an idea or a trick up your sleeve, something you want to try out, but ultimately responsibilities to the character, to the story, to that sequence of that day, and just trying to do the best job as possible. Playing Elio, um, he is kind of a renaissance teenager mm -hmm. in a way. Um, what was your research process in Tim? Did you read the book and also kind of, you don't remember the 80s, but your experience <laughs> of being a teenager in the 80s, it's so nuance in particular, which, right. you know, is captured so well. Right. Well, how did you go about doing well, it? Yeah, like you said, it's the, the book. It, the book becomes like a Bible of sorts. And for those that have read the book, it's fiercely from the point of view of Elio. So there's just so much to pull from. And there's, there's a lot of background information. And then, as you, you know, pointed out, too, there's a lot of piano playing. And I had to learn Italian for that, too. So there was, a, you know, about a month and a half, two months of, uh, of a background research going into it. And, um, and then when it comes time to do it, you just try to let that all go and, and do the best job you can. I think, uh, not in the method -y sense, I don't think a relationship uh, has to mirror what's on screen necessarily. And I think if your characters don't know one another, that could be helpful to have a, uh, a guardedness or an awkwardness or a, a wall uh, present in the scene. But if you're working with someone intimately, it's good to have that chemistry. Just from a perspective of you know wanting to try things out as an actor and feeling comfortable and not feeling like the person opposite you is going to be judging you, which can sound silly or something, but you know it's a game of sensitivity. And the more sensitive you can make yourself, the more the more you're able to communicate usually. So um, comfort's important, and and also I think a working relationship and and uh, you know the hopefully the emotional IQ and. To, to know when to step away if your scene partner's having a tough time at things or know when a word of encouragement could be used, knowing what not to say. Um, but ultimately trying to be you know, the greatest ensemble member as possible, keeping in mind that it's a marathon and not a sprint. And particularly if you are one of the leads on a project that you know, you're a tone setter of sorts. So um, you can't exclusively be concerned about your performance and actually often your performance is aided if you can put your collective conscious on somebody else in the scene, or on the story, or on the script, and not, you know, what's happening to that line, or what inflection you want to use, or, or what have you. That's what makes me want to be an artist, that's what makes me want to be an actor, is that feeling of flow. And, um, like, I, I heard someone say it to me once before, like, it can be stapling papers, or um, it can be uh, playing the piano, or it can be acting. I think when you lose yourself, when you find that certain feeling, that's what's exciting, um, uh, and more exciting than you know, being at home eight hours before you do the scene and thinking that's the scene that I, that I feel that climax and lose myself in, but rather, you know, you're in the middle of the scene and in and, and no cheesy way, but just feeling like, oh, I don't know what happened there. That was uh, 
truthful or, sp or spontaneous and um, and working from that perspective which is admittedly easier the more you work because like I, rem I remember like Craig Gillespie who directed I, Tanya, he put me in my first pilot ever in one of my first jobs. I remember the audition I had for him, I think I had three lines in like a three page scene so I didn't really have much to say, it was a family scene. I memorized where each family member in the room was so in this audition my, my neck was snapping around and, you know, after the first couple takes, he's like, you know, you just look at the reader and you don't have to keep pretending there are people everywhere. So, like, I, you know, uh, you know, on the starting outside, like, I would want to know exactly what I was doing in advance <laughs> and, and memorize the other dialogue and scene and what other people were doing. Like, the scene with Mr. Perlman at the end of Calling By Your Name is a huge speech, and I usually really like to know what the opposing dialogue is just for a rhythm of the scene and to know the pacing. But that was one where I, you know, I think I knew maybe what one of his last lines were, but I really wanted to experience it and hear it on the day and, and have a natural moment with it and not, uh, not know exactly what was coming. I think you see with people that have messed with 4D or in the past, smell activation, or even Kanye West at the Cannes Film Festival set up seven screens a couple years ago. And with the emergence of VR, there's so many directions it can go. But if you see like the, that the IMAX gatekeepers are gatekeepers simply because they have the keys, I don't know, they're people that will be restraining change, but also those that will be entitled to point in what direction it goes will be in positions of power. So hopefully it'll be organic, we'll see. Has the last year in a way surprised, have your lives changed dramatically in kind of the last 12 months with the success of these two films? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, what I'm really grateful for with Calling By Your Name, and I can, I, I don't, I, I'd be curious if this was the experience on Get Out, because I remember being in New York when Get Out came out, and it really, it was like an explosion. Like, everyone was so excited to see it, and the posters were everywhere, and the great thing is, like, I haven't had the total destabilizing experience. I think you can read an interview sometimes with other people where it's really like an overnight switch or something. And what's amazing is like when I see people or people stop me in the street, or I've seen you a couple times. Um, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's, it's always, it's, it, it hasn't been, oh, you're in that show, you're in that movie. It's, oh, you're in Call Me By Your Name, which is a book that really means the world to me. So that's, I mean, you dream about that as an artist, really. Like, that's, that's been really, nice for me to experience because I have seen people I've admired in interviews maybe not be so comfortable with that, but I've, like, I enjoyed it <laughs> anytime somebody's like, you know, that they read the book or they like the movie. Where, 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 where have you seen them? <laughs> where, where have you seen them? She was in London the last time I was here. All right. Yes. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my life changed, man. My yeah. life changed, man. Yeah. No, but the thing is, I'm trying to, I, I hide, didn't it? You told me you couldn't come back to London the first time after you get out. No, no, I just, yeah, I had to, I, I came You can out. go home, you can go home. I couldn't go home, like, because I went, I went back to the estate, so I was like, yo, like, I came out, I was like, what the, like, and then, and then I, you just get, I just, I always hide, didn't it? I go, like, I'm never, I just don't really want to engage with it. I just, I like, and then. So like now I think it's probably going mad in LA and I'm here, so it's great. <laughs> so it's like, but it's just like you kind of, you kind of, because you, you, I don't know how my life's changed because it hasn't, it's gone up a notch. It mm. keeps on going up a notch and you don't know what is the norm, new normal now, you know? And I'm not so just saying it because we're here. This is like, this has been the great thing about having a friendship with Daniel is all these stops we've been doing. I don't feel like I relate to any, or very few people in the room, but I can always lock eyes with Daniel and we'll be like, what the fuck is going on right now? Yeah, yeah. But you've obviously, you've both made some really interesting and very clever choices. To be fair, in the films you've done, you know, with Lady Bird and Call Me By Your Name, Black Panther, Get Out. It's Black Panther, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nervous about kind of what you're going to accept and what you're going to do next? Is, is there a level now of expectation that, wow, this Well, there's a get, the, the Get Out universe and the Calling By Your Name universe yeah. are fusing. And yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody liked that. Okay. Well, <laughs> so, uh, no, I mean, um, mm, yes and no. I mean, again, this feels like, 
you know, I, I'm, I'm very young, and yet there have been a lot of auditions that are no's and meetings that are no's and projects that you're a part of that get made but aren't necessarily well received. So this feels like appreciation time, and there's maybe two weeks left of having this nice kind of moment. So what comes from there will be great. I don't know. I, I find the one thing I keep in my mind is like, hey, you know, have res, you know, respect the uh, uh, respect the reception, if that makes any sense, and. You know, you, you have to try and be in the pedigree of Lady Bird or call me by her name or get out. You can't, uh, you know, you can't solve that out. Daniel, do you think you'll go back to writing? That's what I've been doing. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. And then just get out. She's gone mad. Like. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, I, that's what I'm, I'm writing a, a TV show and a film. So I've been doing that more than acting. That's what's quite surreal for me. It's kind of like, like, all oh, this is... I just made a couple of decisions. I was like, oh yeah, I'll do that, I'll do that. And then it's just like, whoa. Because um, I was just kind of was like, oh man, like I just felt this urge to like to to to, to write and, and and I got loads of ideas that I want to like make and, and you just have to put the hours in because you're reading and it goes, oh, this is shit. Like uh, and you're like, <laughs> I need to get back. Like, you know what I mean? You just have to put the, there's no shortcut. No. You have to put the I mean you don't want the shortcut, you want a long cut. The long cut's always more interesting. So you have to just do the work. Um, so yeah, like that's that's kind of where my my head's at, where I'm where I'm heading, and then yeah. And the thing you're writing is there a part for a young skinny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you got bone cut, bro. Okay. okay. <laughs> 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 no, there is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll text you. I'll text you. I could have told myself it, it, it would be. Um, I don't know. I think it's um. It's a lesson that I, I feel like I learned early on, but it's one that I try to keep as personal as possible. I don't think it's exclusive to entertainment and to, to filmmaking. I think it's in any uh, collaborative process that it's often not personal. Uh, a negative note, someone uh, being uh, brash in the way they're giving you a note, it's, you're, it's a team effort. So there's, because like I said, you, you want to keep yourself open and, and sensitive when you're working, at least I try to. But you have to, and that, and that can be, this can be not, I feel like, uh, apparent at a young age, but there has to be like professional you, work you, thick skin, um, ready to get whatever note really comes at you. And then there's personal you, which uh, you protect and helps you protect the work you, and I think you keep those things separate. And I, I guess that was, I, I had a good year in drama high school where I felt like I did a scene poorly a number of times where I felt like I could get over being bad, and yet, before that, I was really like a very, very sensitive um, uh, uh, about performance and notes and, and would take things personally when really, I mean, the whole point and the tension as an actor is, you know, your body, your voice, your physicality is your instrument, and yet it's not personal if somebody gives you a note or you're not clicking, you're not getting a scene a certain way.